personal space, exclusivity, luxury, and natural beauty. These are hallmarks of a private island escape, offering tailored experiences for a select few. Their remoteness is a prized quality. If escaping from the world and seclusion are your primary objectives. But as sweet as that sounds, there are those like me who can lounge on my picture-perfect villa for a total of 30 minutes before setting out to find what to do next. Banua Private Island, a 6-hectare tropical Eden only 2 hours away from Manila, thankfully caters to both kinds of travelers. Not only do they tick all the boxes, I found that they also created their own boxes to tick. Adventures filled with meaning and deep connections. After all, no man is a private island. Our helicopter flight from Manila opens up the hidden world of Banwa Private Island, where a stay is the very definition of luxury. You get an all-inclusive holiday where your every need is anticipated and every experience tailored to your liking. And in this bubble of exclusivity and privacy, you share a sanctuary with a host of avian species and marine life. Getting to observe them in their natural habitat while contributing to their protection is truly enriching. As if these are not enough, Banwa offers their guests much more. So what really sets us apart, I think, is our 10-kilometer radius around here. And if you look around the islands that we are nearby, as well as mainland Palawan and, and the Tumabong Bay, we have an enormous amount of experiences that we offer. And they can be everything from a speedboat journey to a waterfall or to a river where you can do a stand-up paddleboard or kayaking. Uh, you can go trekking to a mountain. You can go to one of our local um, islands, integrate with the locals and, and interact with them. Um, you can also go to a farm, which is an organic farm, which we have built together with Ireland. We like to say we are remote, but we're not removed. Yeah. And, and that's one of our biggest thing here, that the fact that we are so accessible. I can't wait to discover the world of adventures waiting beyond the shores. There are several ways to get out of the island. And one of them is this impressive piece of machinery. Is this a tank? Is it a boat? No, it's called an iguana commuter. And I'm gonna take a ride in this thing this morning. This is going to be fun. This high-tech amphibian will bring us to one of Banwa's escapades, a sandbank not far from the island. And who better to take me than Peter himself, a licensed iguana operator. I can tell he was having fun sailing or driving this shiny new ride. From the sea, we were soon walking over dry land on this magnificent sandbar in the middle of turquoise waters. And at the other end was a nicely pitched tent waiting for us. Make yourself comfortable. This yes. is the only way to enjoy the sunset. This, is, nice. this, is, this, this is, nice. is what you have. So what do you usually have here? The most popular thing is, is the sundowner, which is basically sunset okay. event for up to as many guests that are on the island. And this is just a sample right. setup, but we do something similar. 
And of course, we have canapes and cocktails, and we have even a mobile bar we bring out here. Wow. We can bring a live band. We do breakfasts, we do lunches, we do picnics, we do special events out here, and it's such a magic place. Proposals. Proposals. <laughs> exactly. Divorce? <laughs> <laughs> we do do divorces, yes, but uh, we don't advertise it. Yes. <laughs> no, joke aside, uh, that special events, yes, absolutely. You should have an airplane here towing a banner. That's a great idea. Will you marry me? How could she say no? Yes. Impossible. <laughs> and it's literally just 10 minutes away from the island. So it's right. Uh, the sandbank has become so accessible to us because of the iguana. The, the iguana yacht. You know, this iguana, you have to explain to me exactly how it functions. Uh, at what level of water do you start uh, putting your gears down? About 1.2 meters, that's when the, the, the landing gear <laughs> goes down. Well, we call As it a that. pilot, you can refer to that. Gear yes, down. yes. Uh, so um, we do use the iguana for guest transfers when we pick up the guests oh. in, in Rojas. So we right, walk up right, on the beach, right. turn it around, and guests can board the boat without getting wet, which is fantastic. It's the only way to arrive on a sandbank, in my opinion. It's right, fantastic. Right, Can't live without it now. What an incredible experience. Being able to easily access dreamy places like this. Some mornings, while taking a walk outside my villa, I noticed that someone's gone back home even later than I have. I learned that these are Palawan flying foxes, one of two species endemic here. These bats obviously had a late night, feeding in some nice bat cave in town. I kind of envy them for being able to sleep through the day, even while dangling from one leg. I asked Bernard, our resident Aquos Foundation guardian, about these cute creatures hanging around my villa. To find out more, Bernard suggested I join him on one of their signature Banwa experiences a sunset cruise to Pagbu Island. It's nice to be able to take a boat anytime to explore nearby places. Pagbu Island, only 20 minutes from Banwa, is a sanctuary for flying foxes. So this specific um, island is a nesting or a roosting site for those flying foxes. It's undisturbed. It's not populated, so they are uh, relatively not uh, being disturbed within the area. What exactly do these uh, fox bats eat? Actually, this is a fruit bat. Who are their predators, by the way? Usually, most of their predators are eagles or large birds that are also seen within the area. But the eagles are working overtime then because it's after yeah, sunset. Yes. <laughs> Sadly, the threat are not only eagles but also humans who hunt them down for eating fruit crops. Bernard tells me that we're here to witness a very interesting natural phenomenon. Those flying foxes will fly out going straight to the mainland because they actually look for food. They could yeah. uh, fly up to 50 kilometers just to look for food. They actually uh, start flying out five minutes after sunset. Five minutes after. They actually precise in the timing. It may vary if it is cloudy, there's no sunset. But if it is like this, we have uh, we have the sunset on the side, then definitely they will be waiting for the sunset. Then yeah. five minutes, they will start uh, flying out. So it's almost sunset. I really like to see them. We'll be going back and then we'll station ourselves there and then we'll wait for the flyout to start. Ah, I'd love to see that. As the sun started to go down, we saw a multitude of wings launching into the sky. The alpha male uh, bats will first go and fly around the area to okay. check if there are any predators. I can see them already. It's the first batch that's flying into the mainland. Oh, but they continuously come out of the mangroves and keep on flying. I can see them. 
Oh, it's a lot. What is the population here of this flying fox? The estimated population count we've done in 2018 was uh, roughly around 43,000. Wow. They are currently listed as vulnerable because of habitat loss and poaching. Watching them fly out in huge numbers against the last glow of sunset was just mesmerizing. I hope they get the protection they deserve. This is so interesting. Waiting for sunset and just watching these bats fly away. This is good meditation. I think I should just sit here. Enjoy the evening watching all these bats fly away. I can almost see in between their wings. I was so lucky to witness another one of nature's amazing spectacles and finally find out where my bat neighbors go every night. Up next, I visit nearby Tumarbong Bay where I meet the local municipality that lives in symbiosis with Banua Private Island and see how their mutual support of each other creates a thriving community. As remote and secluded as Banwa would like their guests to feel, the management knows that the island cannot exist apart from the environment and the people beyond its shores. After all, Banwa means community, something the island firmly stands for. Guests are invited to experience this bigger world through excursions to Barangay Tumarbong, a short ride on the Iguana commuter. Of course, I've never seen a more eager volunteer driver than Peter, who joyously takes us over sea and shallow to our destination. Today, I was joined by Janet, whom I have known for years. She has amassed a lot of experience in managing luxury resorts all over the world. And I was happy to see her back here in Palawan. Janet, it was such a fun ride coming over. Uh, you call this place uh, Tumarbong? Yes. What do we see here? Well, first, Captain Joy, Tumarbong is the barangay where the island belongs. Okay. It is a sitio of this uh, barangay. I see. And Tumarbong will show you, I think, a very typical fishing village mm -hmm. in a remote Palawan location. But what is the importance of this town for your for the resort. We are closest in distance. It's only 10 minutes by boat mm -hmm. from uh, Banwa Private Island, okay. as well as with its people. No? We are partners in protecting the reef around Banwa Private Island. That's great. We work with the local council, mm -hmm. with the Capitan, and there's a Tumarbong Marine Protected Area Management Board. Mm -hmm. We also are partners with the Tumarbong Elementary School. Great. From the years that island was being developed and during construction, majority of the employees have been from Tumarbong and its nearby sitios and uh, other islands around us. Until now, it is still the same. I'm excited to see the place already. Janet tells me that not far from where we disembark is the Tumarbong Organic Farm. Most of the local produce in Chef Ramzu's kitchen come from here. I met Erwin, the farm leader, who, like many other employees of Banua, hails from Tumarbong. Bali, dito po talaga ako pinanganak, then dito na ako nag-aaral hanggang sa may asawa na andito pa rin po ako. Saan dito? <laughs> Hindi kita sisisihin. Napakaganda rito. Anong trabaho responsibilidad mo talaga sa Banwa? Kasi gardener lang po ako dati sa isla. 
So, nagkaroon po ng ano ng training, nag-training po ako ng foreman sa organic farming po. Oh. Pagka after nun, sir, inasign pa ako dito bilang farm leader po. Talagang lahat yata ng hawakan mo lumalago, <laughs> kaya ikaw ang napili. <laughs> Sana nga po, sir, ganun. <laughs> With an emphasis on healthy cuisine and a dedication to sustainability, everything here is grown organically and ethically. Nagsimula po itong farm sir noong 2018. Meron po tayong vermiculture, tapos meron din po tayong mushroom culture, tapos meron din po tayong kuprahan po. Erwin shows me some of these initiatives. Anong klaseng mushroom? Ang ina, kasi madaming klase, di ba? Mayroon po tayong uh, white oyster mushroom at saka gray oyster mushroom po. I can't even make things grow in sunlight, much less in the dark. So ito, mga ipa, ito, ipa. Opo, iba po. Tapos ginagawa mo lang fertilizer. Opo, opo. Hinahalo po namin sa vermicast. Vermicasting is making use of earthworms to turn organic waste to fertilizer. Kailangan po talaga natin ng uh, animal manure para sa para sa pinakapakain po sa kanila. Yeah. Then, at saka gumagamit din po kami ng mga yung waste po ng kitchen na yung mga sariwang gulay na hindi na nakasama. Uh, mm. Hindi ba lumalaki ito? Baka lumaki ito, makawala. Ay, hindi po, sir. <laughs> Kailangan po talaga, sir, dinidilig po talaga siya. Ay, araw-araw po. Bali, every three days po. Three days. O, pwede okay. na rin po. Yung... And then, magandang ano to para sa halaman malapit sa tabing dagat no Opo, sa mga san para Opo. tumaba siya Opo. With the abundance of coconut trees in the area they also do copra production Ilang kilo na po po juice niyo sa isang tapahan po nagtatapa po kami ng mga 3000 pieces po na Opo. Nag-hire na lang po ng tao sa labas, uh-huh. sila na po yung nagpa-process ng kopra. Kami na lang po yung nagpapauso. Mm. Kami na po yung Ang maganda nagtutuyo. dyan, nakakatulong ko kayo, pati iba nakakapagkuha ng trabaho. Opo. I got to meet some of the ladies processing the coconuts for the kiln. Bullseye lahat eh. Parating sa gitna, tama mo. Ang asawa mo ba, hindi natatakot sa'yo? Ayawan ko po sa... <laughs> Pa-testing nga. Isa lang. Paano ba kinunggawa yan? <laughs> At least, I got it. Ah, pero hindi na biyak. Sa'yo, biyak agad eh. Ang galing mo eh. Erwin, sir, pinupayagan mo ba ang misis mo mag ganito? Ay, hindi po, sir. Dapat talaga. Huwag mo ba mag Ang napagalitan na patay ka. Anong ginagawa niyo dito? Ginagawa niyo rin fertilizer? Bali, ito, sir. Ito po yung pinaka-panggatong natin sa pausok natin. Sa pausok. Sa Huwag mo rin papakita sa asawa mo yan. Alam mo kung bakit? Baka pagbunuting ka sa bahay. Ang nga po, sir. <laughs> There is much to be learned from visiting the farm. And I found a very passionate and hardworking team here. A true reflection of their Banwa training. Janet tells me that their ultimate goal for the farm is to extend its training to the nearby village, sharing their knowledge in successfully growing organic produce. We'll show you the village okay. and we will be accompanied by the Kapitan. We met with Barangay Captain Dante de los Reyes. Kapitan, ikaw mas mataas ang rango sa akin dahil ikaw binoto. <laughs> Ako, binigyan lang ng titulo. <laughs> ano ba ang hanap buhay madalas niyo dito? Siyempre po, uh, tabing dagat at mayroong tumundukan. Farming and fishing. Nung nagkaroon ng resort si Janet dito, nakatulong naman sa bayan. Ay, mal- malaki po. Malaki, malaki na tulong po. nila. Kaganda po, uh, naisalba po ng banwa ang island na yan. <laughs> <laughs> Dahil nung wala po, po sila, talaga rampant ang illegal dyan. Ngayon, ang una-una pong malaki ay tulong, siyempre, pagputipta ng environment, mm. employment. Siyempre, yung napupunta sa barangay na sir, RPT sir, mm. binabayad ng banwa doon sa munisipyo. Siyempre, malaki. Mayroon pong 25% ang barangay doon. It's good to know that Banwa is making a positive impact in the lives of the community around them. Captain Dante was eager to show me around. 
Sakay po tayo para makita natin yung community. Let's try the top down. Oh, may top down ka? Opa. Without seeing it, I already volunteered to drive. I didn't think he would take me seriously. But it was still a good way to see the town. We stopped at the Tumarbong Elementary School where the kids and teachers have prepared a surprise for us. Ah, uh, Captain. Uh, uh, welcome po kayo dito sa Tumarbong Elementary School. Uh, Parang kayo Tumarbong. Ganda pala dito sa inyo. Thank you! <laughs> I got to meet the teachers and students who were all very warm and welcoming. Teacher Leia told me about the school's close relationship with Banwas Aquos Foundation. Banwa helped us in many ways. Every Brigada Escuela we have or the Banwa uh, landscaping team extended okay. their services here I see. through grass cutting and sports equipments were also donated by Banwa through Mom Chanet. Last April 7, 2018, they initiated the medical mission. But one of their most noteworthy projects is putting up the school's library in partnership with a major bookstore. So Banwa also helped organize the library. Yes, oh. a dream come true for Tumarbong Elementary School. Good morning, visitors! Wow, good morning! <laughs> How are you? Are you all studying? Yes. Very hard or hardly? <laughs> By supporting the educational and logistical needs of the students, the foundation is able to communicate to them an understanding of environmental issues and sustainable living. Ika, what do you want to be when you graduate? A doctor. A doctor, okay. I hope I don't meet you professionally. Ika, what do you want to be? Um, lawyer. Lawyer? All the lawyers are very strict. <laughs> I want to be a flight attendant. Flight attendant? You know, I have airplanes and you can fly with me. And yourself, what do you like to be? to be a pilot. Oh, okay! Being a pilot allows you to see the world and share the experience with the other kids in town. I am very happy that these kids are looking at a very promising future. I am also amazed at this beautiful cycle that Banwa has created. Guests staying in the island help support the Aquos Foundation which helps the community, wildlife, and environment prosper, making Banwa an even more magical place to be, which ensures that guests have a memorable stay. Up next, more adventures come my way. Taming a runaway runway, embarking on a jungle river cruise, and chasing a waterfall while preparing my own surprise for the kids of Tumarbong Elementary School. Banwa Private Island has proven that it's not just a luxurious escape, but a jump-off point for extraordinary and authentic experiences. Today, I joined Bernard for another adventure. A 30-minute boat ride from the island takes us to the tributaries of the Barbacan River. For a moment, I felt like I was transported to the jungles of the Amazon. We cruised along the river, snaking through thick mangrove forests. What about other guests? Why do you show them this area? When they go here, they could have a close connection with nature. The river cruise itself alone will give you that feeling of relaxation. You could only hear the sound of the cricket around the mangrove area. 
putting our kayaks and paddle boards to use, we explored the lush surroundings, beckoned by the river's secret pathways. Bernard tells me that this is a protected area and only soft impact tourism activities, meaning non-motorized water activities are allowed. We continued our exploration, disembarking on the banks of a small fishing village. Most of the fishermen here are into crab traps, uh, collecting uh, mud crabs. That's my favorite food, so... Do I get a chance to do this? Yeah, hopefully we could have uh, one of our local fishermen later to, uh, to show us on how to catch those crabs. Okay, I would love that. I met Marlo, a crab fisherman, who tells me more about their trade. Gusto, gusto ko matutunan. Paano hinuhuli yan? Kasi madalas, pag nandun ako sa balengke, okay. eh, ready na, nakatali na. Paano ba yung nuhuli yan? Yung kanak na yun, i-trap siya. Traps para sa alimango. So, papain na natin yung sa, sa, ano, doon sa loob. Pagpain nun, i-aarihan natin doon ngayon sa panabing ilog. Pagkatapos nun, hihintay tayo ng high tide ng tubig. Sige, ano? Ah, sige. Uh, bangka mo ba ito? Pwede ba natin mo? Oo, oh, ayan ba, sir. Ayan ang oh. Now that the tide is higher, we can go check on Marlo's crab traps. Nandito yan lagi sila sa mga galalo pa, nandiyan sa mga gilid-gilid na yan ng mga punong bakaw. Oh. Nandiyan yan sila. Pag high tide, pumapasok yung mga alimangang galing dito sa ilog. Ay. Uh, Pero ano kinakain nila dito? Kung wala kang pain, no? Normally may pain ka eh, di ba? Pwede rin naman silang kumain ng mga kung ano yung mga, yung mga lumot ng mga, mga ugat ng bakaw. Gusto nila yun. Oo, oh, yan. Eh, eh ano pinapain mo dyan? Kalimbawa, yung mga tinagtad na isda. Mayroon na ba kung nilagay na trap dyan? Tingnan nga natin oh, kung may mahuhuli tayo. Uy, so, ayun, kita ko na yung ano mo. Uy, kita ko na yung net mo. Oh. Mukhang may laman na ito ah. Nasa taas yung pain. Bababa pa ba ako? Pwede oh. ko nang hatakin dito, pwede ano? Na sir, pwede oh. na, sir. Okay. Bunutin niyo muna, sir, yung ano, yung Kahoy. pinakatusok niya. Oh. Ingat ka, sir. Baka makagat kayo kung mayroong laman. <laughs> okay. Tulungan na kita, sir. Oh, Tulungan sige, na kita. Sige, sige, sige. Ikaw okay. ang... Magaling dito eh. Ikaw ang expert. Okay. Oop, dalawa, dalawa. <laughs> dalawa. Okay, uy, dalawa. Lalaki. Mga Sila... ilang kilo to? Mga ilang uh, kilo? Yan, sir. Isang kilo na yung dalawa na yan. Mayroon pa tayong isang titingnan yan, sir. Oh, yung sige. inarihan natin kanina. Silipit nga natin. Silipit natin yung isa. Oo, oh, baka talagang sineswerte tayo. Masarap ang kain natin mga mayang gabi. Naku, nakawala na yata. <laughs> nakawala ba, sir? Ah, yun, yun, yun. Kita ko na. Uy, nakikita ko na, sir. Ano? Oh, mayroon. May isa. Mayroon. Oh, may isa rin. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. Oh, naka 1.5 ka na, sir. Halos mag 1.5 na yan yung naanong okay. alimango na huli. Pwede na tayo oh. maghanap buhay. Afterwards, Marlo shows me how they tie down the crabs before they are sold. Ilang beses ka na nakagat? sa pagtatali niya. Hindi lang magsampung bisis, sir, na nakagat ako ng alimango. What a very interesting morning. Having this immersive encounters with nature and with the locals. Now, to have Chef Ramsu make a masterpiece out of the day's catch. While we had the helicopter on the island, I thought I'd fly to some nearby places that I'd like to visit. One of them is the old runway in the mainland, which I haven't flown to for a long time. It has not been operational for a while, which is a pity because it could easily service this eastern portion of Palawan. I met with Mayor Dennis Sabando to chat about the runway. Mayor, Noong 1980s, lumilipad ako dito sa inyo. Nakalanding na ho ako rito. Enjoy na enjoy ho ako pumunta sa palengke. From that time on, hindi na ho ako nakalipad. Kamusta ho? Ano ba nangyari sa airstrip natin? Wala na nung minihan eh, di ba dati? May... Wala na po. 1978 po na kuha na po nila. Yeah. Kaya lang hindi na turn over sa munisipyo. Napabayaan na po noong 1980. So noong 2001, ako na po yung mayor, uh -huh. kuna ko po itong airport sa so, Pinaripe. 
Kano kahaba ho ba yung runway natin? Ang runway po, almost 1,200 po. Pero ang nagawa po, nasa 1,000 meters. Pero ang width po nito, kung tutuusin po, nasa 100 po ito. Oo. Ano maitutulong ng runway para sa inyong community? Ay, dito po talagang malaki po maitutulong. Siyempre po, sa mga kalakal ng mga negosyante, makakatulong po, lalo na yung mga private planes, mga commercial planes, makakatulong po dito ng malaki sa aming bayan ng Rojas. Ako ko, tutulong sa inyo Apo. para maayos natin ang husto na pumasa sa lahat ng klase ng regulasyon. Ayaw po. Pagtulungan po natin Apo. at uh, para mas madalas ko kayo mabisita. Alam nyo, pag madami ng turistang pumunta, baka pati hotel, pwede na tayong magtayo rito. Ayaw po. Tsaka restaurant ng mga sasarap na seafood. Ayaw po. <laughs> para may stop sila rito ito bago pupunta sa mga isla yung makadiretso sila mula Maynila diretso dito malaking bagay ho, lalo na sa mga resort natin Aviation is really a driver for development especially for an archipelago It is my hope that private and government sectors unite in helping towns like Rojas Palawan become more accessible From the airport, we flew to the thickly forested mountains of Bagumbayan. It was a friendly little village which had a treasure hidden in its lush interior. This is what Peter wanted me to see. Knowing more about the top down now, I thought I'd cut the trek shorter by getting on one. Peter followed riding off-road on two wheels. That was fun. Yes. <laughs> it was while it lasted. From here, we have to rely on two legs. Well, this is the first uh, river we have to cross. We have to crisscross going up. So, let's see. Ah, very nice. This will be an interesting walk. The trees around us are just uh, absolutely beautiful. Everything is very natural, Peter. I enjoy this. It doesn't get more natural than I this. I know, yes. This is such a sweet escape. Hearing only the relaxing sound of water gushing over the rocks. The flowing stream led us to the town's best-kept secret. A hidden waterfall cascading from the mountains. Well, Peter, you, you, you made the right choice of uh, destination for me today. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. It's such, a, such an unusual experience. Yeah. And the fact that you pass the school and you integrate with the kids, well, it doesn't get any better than this. It's a fantastic place that uh, not too many people get to see. We should have a couch here and have a... Hammock. A hammock? Even it's better. <laughs> hammock in the minibar, how's that? Yes, okay. I'll take it. Rejuvenated by our trek, I thought I'd pass by the Tumarbong Elementary School before heading back to the island. I wanted to be the one to surprise them this time. Whenever I fly somewhere on the helicopter, I make it a point to let the curious kids see it up close and teach them a bit about how it works. It was good that most of the kids and the teachers were there that morning, so I had a sold-out audience. It's so nice to see everybody's curious faces and explain to them what a helicopter is. I hope it will inspire one of them to be part of the aviation community. Luckily, I already met some of the kids last time who were interested in flying someday. I remember that girl, yung first na magiging pilot, si attorney. 
na naging captain. <laughs> attorney. Ali ka rito. Attorney, but ayaw na maging attorney. Gusto mo na maging pilot. Oh, yung mag-flight attendant. Ikaw ba yun? Ali ka na. Bakit gusto mo maging flight attendant? Para maalibot ko pa yung mundo. Tama. Malilibot niyo lahat ang mundo at magdadala kayo ng pasalubong para sa mga magulang niyo pag uwi niyo rito. At saka madami kayong matututunan tungkol sa mundo na maisishare niyo sa kayong mga kababayan dito sa baryo or sa barangay. I thought I'd take the kids on their first helicopter ride just around the area. Seeing their faces light up in excitement and be able to view everything from a different perspective was such a fulfillment. I hope this is an experience that inspires them, which they will be able to look back to someday. I had the same feeling ending my stay in Banwa. The world outside seemed to have faded away as I spent time in its cocoon of privacy. But rather than feeling detached, I felt energized. Surrounded by nature and living creatures, I felt fully alive. The experiences that they created for their guests fuel this renewed vigor with interactions that lead to community involvement and a commitment to conservation. This is the kind of impact Banwa Private Island wants their visitors to make. Not one that is felt by the environment, but one that stays only in your fondest memory. This has been your captain, Joy Roa. See you in the next Asian Air Safari.